Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do the Q&A video I've been talking about. I've gotten all the questions together across different videos and Instagram and things like that. So I'm going to answer them. Some of them are personal, some of them are going to get really long because they're very involved questions. Um, and some of them are just really fun. So if you want to know a little bit more about me because of questions that you guys asked, then keep watching. for ask, asking questions I'm gonna try and get to all of them there wasn't too many you know which is fine it's more like there's across some videos there's questions I thought would be really good for this video so I didn't quite answer them in comments then I have the Q&A video where there is it was a giveaway so a lot of people were asking um, entering the giveaway which is awesome um, so some questions might be lost in that mix, and then I have Instagram. So if I missed your question, I'm sorry. And also if you have any other questions for me, let me know in the comment section below here, because I'd be more than happy to do this video again more frequently if there's anything you guys would like to know that maybe I didn't answer. Also, I'm gonna try and keep this video as short as possible, but it'll probably be on the longer side, because some of these questions do get a little involved, and you guys know I cannot shut up. So, I'm really sorry if this is one of those long rambly videos, but anyway, let's get into the questions. I'm going to be looking off camera to my computer screen because I film on my phone and I can't look at my phone for this. So, you're going to see this weird side of my face again. I'm very sorry, but let's get into the questions. Um, I'm not asking in any specific order. I'm just reading what's in front of me and uh, answering them. Um, so, the first question that I see is from Karina Vandenberg 1982 this is our Instagram questions can you say no to a good bargain when you see it that is an easy question absolutely not in no capacity can I ever say no to a good bargain next question is from Allison 2.0 uh, she asks or they ask would you rather have a big belly but be able to eat anything or have a model like belly but never be able to eat foods you like. This is actually kind of a fun question. I'll tell you why. Um, I talked in a previous video, I actually gained a lot of weight a few years ago from, I was on birth control and the birth control destroyed my metabolism. I gained an unhealthy amount of weight in the course of six months. It was over 60 pounds. Um, I wasn't eating anything crazy. I was actually sort of swimming and going to the gym and working out at the time and eating pretty healthy. I was eating under 2,000 calories, very lean meats. It just, something triggered and it like turned off my metabolism. My primary doctor, I went to see a specialist, my uh, OBGYN, they were like, what is happening? Oh my gosh. And I got off it and it's just been really hard for me to lose that weight. Even though I watch what I eat, I drink a lot of water and tea and things like that. But I've been both ways, so I'm bigger now, which, you know, I'm not so worried. It's not like, oh, hey, I'm fat. You know, I just want to be healthier. I want to build my endurance up. So if I stay this size, and this is just what size I'm supposed to be, that's fine. I just kind of want to build up my strength and my endurance. Um, and if I stay this size, that's fine. But I was, you know, like a size two before. So I've had it both ways. Um, and so I think for me, seeing how... I am in my skin now versus how I am. There was something really um, nice about being able to fit into a lot of different things and finding a lot of clothes and having that confidence. But I don't find having a bigger belly or like being bigger or plus size, because I am a plus size girl now, um, there's nothing not beautiful about it. Um, and there's nothing like ugly or repulsive about it. So I think that if it came down to purely being able to eat what I want and staying the size, I think if I was healthier and I got, you know, my endurance and strength up and I was able to be the size and eat what I want, I think I would actually choose that. But I don't think that there's anything wrong with, you know, being smaller too. I think there's beauty in all sizes. So my choice would actually be um, eating what I want because I have a lot of restrictions on my diet anyway um, because I get very sick very frequently. I have major GI issues. If you want to know more about that, I'm not 
hiding it from you guys. It's just I don't think you guys care. Um, so having the freedom to eat what I would be, I would want to eat because I already have some restrictions already. I think that freedom and <laughs> reducing that anxiety off of me would be fantastic as well as, you know, there's beauty in all sizes. I just want to be healthy, the healthiest version I can be. And if that's being a plus size girl, that's fine. Next up, I have two from Farbor Clara. I never pronounced her name right, but I love her Instagram. She was um, the international winner, so she's really fun. Um, her Instagram is filled with beautiful pictures of her dogs and scenery. I'm always super jealous. Um, so she has two questions, so let's answer the first one. Um, if you would only be able to use one fragrance for the rest of your life, what would it be? And I kind of went into this in another video. Um, it was a tag video where it was like, you know, like a luxury tag, like choose one perfume. It would actually not be my ride or die. My ride or die is uh, Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. It's one of my absolutely favorite fragrances. It holds a lot of memories for me. I really enjoy it. But I feel like if there's only one fragrance that I could wear that makes, that let's remove scent memories from it. Let's remove nostalgia from it. That makes me feel confident, that makes me feel sexy, that is beautiful, that hits almost everything I want out of a fragrance. It would definitely still be Rose de Araby from Armani Privé. That is just a beautiful fragrance. It smells so good on me. I feel confident, I feel sexy, and I get beautiful rose and woody notes, and it's just a stunning fragrance in general. And I don't think I could ever not wear that. Now, if you had to put scent memories into the mix, then it would be um, Aqua Universalis Forte from Mason Francis Kirk John. And as much as I love that fragrance, I love that fresh citrus, but I don't know if I could ever not wear a rose fragrance. I think that I love rose fragrances, and my husband likes rose fragrances, and they just, they just make me feel really beautiful and feminine. And so I don't think I could ever say no to never, I don't think I could ever give up wearing rose fragrances. So I think Armani Privé uh, Rose de Araby would definitely be the one that I would choose to wear because it just smells amazing. And then her other question is, what is your favorite Creed fragrance? Now Creed is one of the brands where you love it or you hate it. Um, some of the fragrances, Cough Cough Aventus is incredibly overhyped. Now I actually like Aventus, but I don't get the hype behind it because I think there's a lot of other fragrances out there that are more unique but I do see uh, Aventus's mass appeal and I actually like Aventus on me better than Aventus for her. I've actually been considering buying a bottle of it but I'm trying to figure out if I care about Batch Co's with Aventus or not. Um, so really when it comes down to it, my favorite Creed fragrance, this is actually easy though, it's Aqua Fiorentina. I love Aqua Fiorentina because to me it's kind of like the grown-up version of Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. There's something very fresh about it, there's something very crisp but slightly sweet and floral about it, and it's really perfect for the environment that I live in. Um, I do also really love Florissimo and Royal Princess Oud and Virgin Island Water and Green Irish Tweed. I could really go into it. I really enjoy Creed fragrances and I love the history and artistry behind it, but if I could only choose one that was my favorite, it would definitely be Aqua Fiorentina. Um, see the pretty things. Do you ever declutter your collection like the ones that have gone bad or you don't like anymore? Yes. I actually filmed a video earlier but I thought it was a little bit too mishmashy. Let me grab this. Where my mom and I will declutter our samples or like bottles or our subscription boxes and we'll kind of give them to each other in like mass. Like she'll just hand me a box filled with crap. So she did that when I went over to her house last night. She gave me so much stuff. I have miniature bottles, sample bottles, full size bottles. This is just part of what she gave me and I filmed it and it was kind of fun but I was like mm, I don't know if this fits for a proper video so maybe I'll save it for a little extra sometime. But um, I do declutter mostly my samples than anything else because I actually am kind of like I like to collect things and when I collect things I go overboard. I use this metaphor, and I believe it's the correct word, metaphor a lot. It's like a dragon like sitting on treasure and like not letting a person steal one small coin even though they have so many things. I am like that with anything that I collect. I have to have it all and I appreciate it all and I love the art behind it and the presentation and how it smells and how it makes me feel and I get really excited. So it's hard for me to declutter 
um, things that I like. And over the course of the past year, I've gotten through a lot of bottles that I didn't like or maybe just didn't smell that good on me. Um, so I have decluttered and I do, but I do it maybe once a year. The last question on Instagram is actually from The Sentinel. They have an awesome fragrance channel. I will link it below. I love watching their videos or watching his videos. He's really super awesome, so definitely check him out. Um, but this question is YouTube specific, which is really fun. Um, were there specific YouTube reviewers that inspired you to start a channel? Um, and I kind of went into this in my favorite female male fragrance reviewers, but I can kind of like summarize that. Um, if you think about the fragrance reviewers, the ones that I kind of remember watching years ago was most definitely Katie Pockrick and also Red Lessons. I really like their channels. And then more frequently the past few years, I've been watching Brooklyn Fragrance Lover and Rome's 08. Um, Cascade Scents. I've been really into Gen Scents. Women's Side. I really love Smurfy Girly and the Fragrancy Blog. Um, Delicious Delights. Um, Hello Philly. Um, who else? Oh my gosh. Um, Tiff Benson, Vava Couture. I love their channels. I don't know why I forgot about them. Those are like the bigger ones right now. Waha Sawas, although I don't believe she's done videos since February. Um, but if you wanted to know the people who got me into it um, more recently is the community in general, but the people that got me really into maybe considering doing it and being excited for the YouTube community and being part of YouTube were the OG people for me, or the people I started watching, which was Red Lessons and Katie Puckrick. Now, if you're talking about outside of the fragrance community, then you're going to talk about all the skincare fragrance and just comedy channels that I just like devour like a hungry hungry hippo um I really enjoy Tati and I really like a lot of Korean beauty bloggers because I love Korean beauty and skincare and I like to get it from the source um so I really love the beauty breakdown and Meech Muse as well they're pretty awesome so those are the ones that kind of got me into YouTube and wanting to create a channel and then for the fragrance side of it um it was definitely Katie Puckwick's videos um I'm missing her so much um, and Red Alessence's videos, and then again, like the ones that I mentioned before, who I just started to devouring crazy amounts of and just really enjoying and wanting to be a part of the community that creates content. So yeah, those are the, those are the, did that answer the question? I'm so sorry if I didn't do it right. All right the YouTube question, so it's not that many, um, so it's not gonna be too much longer, but I really wanted to kind of give this one question because it's like a group of questions in it. Um, really kind of give it some time to talk about it. That's why this video is going to be a little bit long because I kind of want to go a little bit in depth with these, some of these questions. This is from Shavathon and I'm just going to preference this video, uh, these questions. I'm going to be talking about the answers to these questions based on my experience at working at a fragrance counter and also working in retail and working in management and also just being a business owner myself. So when I'm answering these questions, I'm not going to be answering them as a reviewer or a consumer, which is what I normally do. I'm going to be coming at you guys with my thoughts and opinions. I'm not, I don't, I'm not saying anything I'm saying is actual, but what I think based on these questions. And when you hear the questions, you'll understand why. So I'm coming at you more from like my professional side, having experience than my um, consumer side. So do you find the business of the fragrance interesting and it constantly amazes me that and there's like three um like subcategories or sub questions okay so the first part of the questions because there's like i said three kind of sub questions to it such a high priced item can get away without printing expiration dates on the bottles an archaic system of batch codes is used where only the company knows the production date while the rest of us have to rely on third-party sites to match the codes um, and again, I'm not saying this is exactly how it's done, but I'm again trying to speak to you as someone who used to stock perfume on the shelves and send things back to companies. And I also purchase from, you know, like places that are discount sites. Um, and I'm going to use a really silly analogy when, and I'm going to use this bottle cause this is actually really good for what I'm saying. When Chanel creates their fragrances, um, their expiration date has to do with this how it is fresh out the box brand shiny new bottle brand shiny new fragrance how it smells fragrances over time depending on the fragrance the notes the quality of the ingredients and how you store them 
Sometimes the top notes start to break down, sometimes they start to get turn different colors if they're clear. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't wear the fragrance. It doesn't mean that if you put it on your skin, it's going to burn a hole in your skin. It just might not smell so good. So fragrance don't so much. They do have a shelf life, but they don't really so much go bad as they change from the original formula. So the formula of a fragrance um, is going to be different in a few years. It's going to smell a little bit different than when you first buy it. So when they have these expiration codes, they want to make sure that it's clearly and distinctively the fragrance that is fresh every single time. It's a level of consistency. When it comes down to it, they want everything to be a little soldier. And so fresh out of boot camp, all shiny, ready to go fight in the war is great. But after a while, maybe when they've been out of the war, maybe they let their hair grow longer. Maybe they let their stubble grow out. Maybe they don't tie their shoes. Um, or they don't iron their uniform as much as they should. So they start to not be the perfect little soldier. That's a so much better analogy than the food one, I'm sorry, than the original soldier. So then if you're looking at recruitment videos, you're going to see the shiny soldiers. You're going to see the ones that are like, they all look the same. They all act the same. They all have a certain level of how they have their appearance. Um, and you're not going to see the ones that are kind of more eh relaxed. That doesn't mean that they're both not capable soldiers, but when marketing these fragrances, there's a level of this is how it smells. When we send out samples, we want to make sure that the bottles you purchase smell like the samples. Um, and so they want to make sure that there is some type of consistency through their fragrances when you purchase a bottle in the store and take it home and wear it. Now that doesn't mean that fragrances are going to go bad. A lot of people collect vintage fragrances. A lot of people search out specific formulations that are maybe like five or six or seven years old. Um, and that doesn't make those fragrances bad or rancid. Again, most of that has to do with ingredients, how you store your fragrances and the quality of the overall product. So generally, um, I think expiration dates are kind of more of like a best buy rather than so much a, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, an expiration, like do not consume past this point. Now you can also go into batch codes and batch codes to me are a little bit different than expiration dates. Batch codes to me um, have to do with creating the recipe of the fragrance. If you have a recipe to make bread and you have butter and you have wheat and you have sugar depending on the bread that you're making you have all these ingredients to make this bread the recipe is going to stay the same but say you go to a local farm to get your butter or your eggs well sometimes the environment of where you get these ingredients from might shift maybe the cows ate a little bit more grass and less of the food that was given to them, which made their milk taste a little bit differently. So when they created the butter, the butter is a little bit different. Maybe it's a little bit richer. Maybe it's a little bit more grassy. Um, so when they use the same place where they get their ingredients, they use the same ingredients to make this bread. It might taste differently. It might have a little bit more of a different consistency when it comes down to it, even though it's the same formula. So what I see a lot of times with reformulations is probably, and I'm not again saying anything specifically, is they have the same recipe, but they might get the ingredients for the recipe from either the same place that maybe there's a difference in the intensity of the ingredients based on the environment or the crop or the harvest or the, um, Maybe they get their ingredients from a different place because maybe the place where they normally get it is sold out. So it's the same ingredient, but it maybe it's a little bit more potent or a little bit more stronger or weaker. And so they're still using the same ingredients or the same formula or recipe to create this fragrance, but that's where you'll see consistencies. And Inventus is a great example. Some people say this one's more smoky, this one's more fruity, this one doesn't last as long, this one's a crazy beast. Um, and I, again, am not speaking from experience because I don't know quite how it works, but if it's not a reformulation, it probably has to do with this batch with this ingredients was stronger than this batch. So maybe somebody likes this batch better because maybe there was more pineapple and more smoke. And this one is like no smoke at all and all pineapple. And maybe that's their way of saying, this is how you find when we got this. 
And batch codes are kind of like serial numbers too. They help you authenticate your fragrances. I know a lot of people when they purchase Creed and they're unsure if it's an authentic bottle, a lot of times they will look for batch codes that are have been known to be um, um, faked and that'll give them in a way to authenticate their bottle as well, especially if it's a really good fake. Again, this is just me speaking out of my mouth hole. Um, and if you have any experience or any thoughts on any of these questions, definitely let me know in the comment section below because I like this kind of comments because it's kind of like getting more into the business back end of the fragrance world. So yeah, that's my thoughts on that first question eight minutes later. And the last question is, no control over older products seems to exist. The major houses won't provide any information if you tell them you bought from a discounter, yet something happens with those older bottles that are returned from department stores to distributors. I've always heard that anything older than six months is removed from the department stores as they're considered stale by the major houses. Yet if you ask a salesperson what the production dates of the current inventory are, they probably can't tell you. This has a lot to do with the other questions before with batch codes and expiration dates. Those fragrances, um, I don't know if six months is the date, but I do know like when I worked in the fragrance store, we did have to pull some stock and send it back and get new things. I don't know if there was something wrong with the formulation or they just wanted to send us something new. I really don't know, but I do remember doing that. I don't remember how long we had it. I do know I worked for the company for almost, I feel like eight months. And it was closer to the end of the time that I worked there and I actually opened that store like I hung shelves as part of the grand opening team so I could see where it's six months at least with the company that I worked for um so I'm not going to dispute that what I am going to say is is that when it comes down to old stock and distributors a lot of times those are extra bottles a lot of times those are gray um sometimes those distributors aren't selling you authentic things anyway <laughs> so you have to be careful where you purchase your fragrances but when it comes down to the batch code and expiration date and things like that, that's kind of more of the quality of the fragrance and also making sure that they are again like little soldiers. It doesn't mean it's stale, it doesn't mean it's bad. Generally most of the times they're going to smell almost identical to the fragrances that you would buy brand new in the store. So I'm not against buying from uh, wholesale distributors or anything like that. They just want to make sure that they have a consistency in their product because they are selling you a luxury and they need to make sure that they continue to uphold the quality of their brand. Now when it comes down to the employees not knowing about a lot of things like that, I'm going to give the employees the benefit of the doubt being one of those employees. And I'm not going to assume that these are employees in Neiman Marcus or employees that are product specialists in the higher end department stores. And I'm talking about the places where you have a Creed specialist, you have a Mason Francis Kirk John specialist, you have a Lancome specialist. Um, I'm talking about like if you go to like say a Macy's and you are a Dillard's and they have their entire fragrance area and those people are in charge of the fragrances. Not so much a product specialist as a fragrance person who can help you with your purchase pretty much in any house, men or women. A lot of times those people need to have a basic idea of the brand because they want to be knowledgeable and be able to answer questions, but it's hard for them to have a super expert knowledge that maybe a product specialist would have when they're only working with maybe say 20 fragrances rather than maybe 200. So I don't think that they would have the capacity, not that they aren't intelligent enough, but it's probably better for them to not worry about that because not many people are going to ask that question and then maybe get a manager or look it up um, or just say, yes, everything's fresh. Don't worry about it. It's new. We send everything back. Um, and not have to know too much about batch codes or too much about expiration dates. It's not so much part of the things that they usually need to know because they have to know so much about so many other things. It's probably one thing that they might miss say and it could end up bad so they probably just don't worry about it. I don't think that's laziness. I don't think that's unprofessional. I think it comes with you're selling 150 fragrances of men's and maybe like 200 fragrances of women and you're one person and you need to know everything across the board of all these fragrances. So it's hard to really say, well, this one expires, this batch code means this, and this batch code means this. Because with a batch code, it is kind of like an archaic code. It's not, this expires then and you can look at a date and say, yes, this is good, this is not good. It's like 
you can't expect them to memorize all those codes and sometimes the codes are arbitrary it's just it's a little bit too much for their pay grade I'll be honest with you it doesn't mean that it shouldn't be easier to decipher for the consumer it absolutely should but I don't think that that's so much of an employee's fault um, for them not being a good employee it's probably just a little bit harder for them and then um, sending back to distributors again they're probably getting old stock I know sometimes they redo their packaging their bottles I know they are Sun perfumer we did their bottles and so you can get a lot of the older bottles now for really super cheap and it's still really good juice and it's the best way to get it in my opinion at this current economy um, and I really like the older bottles anyway although the newer newer ones are amazing with a li little jeweled bee on it holy crap I'm gonna buy all of those at some point in the near future. I just hope I like the perfume. I'm a packaging person. Uh, but there's a lot of different reasons why you're able to get certain fragrances on the gray market. Um, it has to do with just things being sent back and then making too many bottles and wanting to sell off the extra stock because they want to make sure that every um, batch that they send out there's a certain amount so that they don't sit too long in their warehouses so that they maintain consistency it's a weird puzzle game but it's a really interesting part of the industry going back to your first question which is uh, do you find the business of the fragrance in industry interesting yes I do question was so long my mouth is dry Ugh. but I actually enjoyed that question and to kind of go off that question if I miss interpreted anything or misrepresented anything if I said any wrong information because again I was just speaking from someone who worked in the industry a long time ago and then worked in retail if I'm wrong and you're right correct me below uh, this is a question somebody asked on my five under five video or five under fifty video um, collect things asked you keep using sexy to describe your perfumes most of the time can you please elaborate on what sexy means to you yes I can um, for me sexy is something that makes you feel ultra confident like you can go out and strangle a bear you can go out and climb Mount Everest you feel confident you feel proud of yourself you just feel sensual you feel like you know the person in your head that you constantly always want to be you feel like that person for me that's just somebody who's ultra confident who's just oozes not sex appeal like not so much like a femme fatale but someone who just like knows who they are and grabs life by the horns or the ducats or whatever you wanted to call um and it's just something that's just ultra powerful for me powerful is very sexy for other people it could be maybe selling sweet or feminine or very masculine um, and like that but for me sexy is something that is sensual something that is powerful and confident I like very smoky fragrances syrupy woody ones tend to be the most sexy in my opinion also spicy things I think the sexiest fragrance I have in my collection and I talk about this all the time and it's very aptly named is lust from gorilla perfumes not only do I find that to be very carnal very sexual um, it's just something about that fragrance just grabs the attention of the opposite sex like so abruptly I have never been stopped more than when I wear that fragrance and The thing is is most of the time when they stop me they're like you smell amazing Where can I get that for my wife or girlfriend? Um, which I think is awesome because I think that that kind of like it awakens something like a sexy fragrance awakens something in you as well um, I can't sit here and tell you that it's specific notes or specific style of fragrance, but I can say that for me a sexy fragrance awakens something, makes you feel confident, and it's very sensual, and usually for me it's something spicy, woody, or ultra sweet. Okay, so this next question is from Pri Prissy? Pricey? Um, Hi Kristen, have you ever tried indie scents from companies like Solstice Scents, 1692, and Alchemia? I have not tried from those three indie scent brands that I've tried as Deconstructed Eden, Eden, Deconstructed Eden, I don't know why I can't say that word, it's really easy, I'm very sorry, Deconstructed Eden, um, Cindy's Labs, I love, as you guys know, I talk about him all the time, his, I love his stuff, also uh, the Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab is really, really good, those are the ones that I've tried, I'm always looking for great indie brands, um, so if you guys 
let me know your favorites. I will probably give them all of my money. It's one of my favorite things. I love finding, I'm not saying finding like I discovered it, but I love discovering and being told, try these people, they're amazing. Um, and I fall in love with them usually. So I will definitely check out those three that you mentioned. I haven't tried them, but again, the ones that I have done again are the Deconstructed Eden, which is actually, I talked about before in a video where I had a few samples of something and I dropped them all and I was going to review them. It was Deconstructed Eden. And my room smells amazing, but it was like, ah. Um, but again, Black, Black Phoenix Alchemy Labs, I believe that's it and also Cindy's Labs. But yes, I always, I haven't tried the ones that you mentioned, but I have tried indie brands. Anyway, those are the questions that I could find through the sea of awesome comments that you guys leave me. So I hope I've answered your questions. I know this video is very long. If you sat through the entire thing, thank you so much. And if not, it's okay. I understand it was a long video. Um, again, if you guys have any questions for me, I'll probably see if I get like, like five to 10 questions, I might do this weekly. Um, or I'll do it once a month. I don't know if you guys want Q&A's more frequently. Um, let me know below. Ask me questions. I'd be more than happy to do this. These are always kind of fun. And I'm pretty much open to answering anything. Um, personal stuff, financial stuff to some degree. You know, I'm not going to give you my bank account number and things like that. But if you want to know about like money or if you want to know about my channel or things like that or fragrance or more of me outside of the channel. I'd be more than happy to answer if you guys are curious. I don't know why you guys would be curious, but in case you are, I'm pretty open to answering questions. So let me know below. And if I get more, I'll do another Q and A. If not, I again will answer the questions in the comment section. But if I don't answer your question in the comment section right away, it's probably because I'm gonna be doing another video. So thank you guys so much for sitting through this long video of me babbling at the camera for way longer than I thought. Um, if any of the information specifically regarding the industry was incorrect, um, please correct me. Um, I like things like this to also be a resource. Um, so again, that's what the comment section is for. Let me know or you can DM me and I can put it in the description box. It's completely up to you. I just would like to, I just kind of gave you my opinions based on my experience working in the industry a long time ago and also working in retail. So anyway, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like videos like this, a little bit more vloggy, talky, chit-chatty, informal videos, give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue doing videos like this. And also don't forget to subscribe. Because it's free, and I'm free, and I put out new videos every Monday through Friday. And sometimes on the weekends as well, so I'll always have something for you to watch. In any case, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I'll see you next time.